When it comes to family vacations, there are a million different trips you can take. You can get your own... trip to Texas. Or if you prefer a vacation from your family, you can always get your own leave the kids with grandma Yay! trip to Texas. So go to traveltexas.com slash get your own for the only trip to Texas that matters. Yours. Good morning. Baby, it's a brand new day. Experience a different tomorrow with Norwegian Cruise Line. Book today and get 50% off your cruise to Alaska, Europe, and beyond. Plus, everyone can enjoy their vacation with free unlimited open bar, free specialty dining, and more. Visit ncl.com, call your travel advisor, or 1-888-NCL-CRUISE. Offer ends soon. Norwegian Cruise Line, Ships Registry, the Bahamas and USA. Restrictions apply. The rest of my life gonna start today. What do eight bags of concrete mix, a cooler full of 30-pound sea bass, and a 10-inch compound miter saw have in common? They're all things that are easier to load in and out of the bed of the new F-150. Thanks to its new available pro-access tailgate, that's also a swing gate. The new 2024 Ford F-150. Tough this smart can only be called F-150. Available starting early 2024. Pro-access tailgate available starting spring 2024. Cargo and load capacity limited by weight and weight distribution. What has your travels while black been like for you? So they've ranged from, I mean, I want to say, like, I've, I've, I can honestly say I've never had a horrible experience somewhere. Um, I've, of course, I've been, I've experienced microaggressions, like, oh my God, can I touch your hair? Like, oh, your skin, like, do you tan? And I'm like, nope, just came out the womb like this. Hey, welcome to Travel Tuesday Happy Hour, where we interview dope people doing dope things from around the world, and we are in season four, Voyage 22. But before we continue, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and you know what? Hit that notification bell so you know when we drop our next episodes. Today, we have an amazing, phenomenal woman. Tell them who you are and what do you do. So the third person today is Zandra Haywood. I am an attorney by trade, but I've only worked in the nonprofit sector, so now I do compliance for a large nonprofit. Oh, you big time. You big no, time. No, it's like medium time. Medium time. <laughs> <laughs> medium. So where are you from? I'm from Newark, New Jersey, Brick City, all the way. <laughs> Newark or Newark? Newark. One syllable. You sure? Oh, she said that with, with a short. Newark, one syllable. Okay. Okay. Newark, one syllable. So what got you into traveling in the first place? Um, so believe it or not, I actually didn't take my first trip till college. Mm. My mom, I don't know. She just didn't believe in plain vacations. So Jersey Shore was all I knew. That's still, that's a trip. Yeah, but I didn't get on a plane till college. And so my first trip was Miami and I fell in love with it. I went for spring break and I was like, oh, this is dope. I got to do this all the time. And from then on, I feel like I've started I started taking like five to six trips a year. And then Whoa. I know as I got a job, it picked up and I probably average 12 trips a year. 12 trips a year? Yeah, I try to do something at least once a month. You are the ultimate traveler at that point. I try to be, you know, I try to keep my platinum status when you're in it. <gasps> Woo, she's she flexing on y'all. You know, that's a little flex. Loyalty, loyalty. So what, what inspires you to travel? Like, what do you look for when you go to these different destinations so, as i've turned 40 on this side of 40 i begin to look for relaxation but i want to say in my prime like 28 to 38 it was adventure it was all like what's the next adventure what's exciting what new can i learn what different cultures can i immerse myself in i mean i tried to pick up a couple languages failed miserably but <laughs> I I just really do love to learn. I call myself a cool nerd. A cool nerd. Yeah. So you've you've done a you've averaged about you said twelve trips a year. Yeah, about that. And so, do you even still have a bucket list? 
I actually I do. I uh, believe it or not. Well, I, I guess I have been to Asia because I've been to Jordan, but mm. I've never been to like mainland, main main Asia. Like I've never been to China, uh, Japan, okay. and those are definitely Tokyo's been on my bucket list for a very long time. Um, Okinawa, Bali, Thailand. And I've, you know, just for some reason, I've never been to that side of the world. Okay. I mean, it's a far, it's a far I know. Reach, you so. got to commit. You got to commit. Yeah. I'll probably do it all in one trip. Okay. All that. Yeah. I'll you know what? I actually planned yeah. that out one year and it's, it's very, it's, it's reasonable. Yeah. But I'll probably it's, do it's it a long, it's trip. a long haul. I mean, so, you do it one time. You don't want to do that flight again. You're right. So you said your prime was in your mid twenties and now like, do you, would you happen to say that you have like a most memorable trip thus far? Um, yeah. So when I was 28 turning 29, I went to Africa for the first time. It was East Africa. Um, I was going for a wedding. So I had two friends. She, one was from Rwanda and one was from Tanzania and they were getting married together. Mm. And, um, she planned this whole like, journey for us beginning mm. in Uganda so oh, wow. yeah so I don't know if many people know about the Rwandan genocide but mm. she was raised primarily in Uganda because of the genocide she was Tutsi and so her part of her family was slaughtered in the genocide so they escaped to Uganda and that's where she was raised and so a large part of her community was from is is Ugandan mm. so that was the first part of our journey that's the first place she wanted us to visit to see where she was from mm. and we did a couple days in Uganda we did a couple days in Rwanda a couple days in Tanzania we went to Zanzibar we um I flew into Kenya actually and I did a night in Mombasa then I went to Kampala and when I got off the plane in Kampala the customs enforcement agency said, welcome home, sister. Oh, wow. And like, I just started bawling and like, I just could not contain it. And so that's probably my most memor memorable moment mm -hmm. of the trip. But there was so much excitement. I mean, I went to Zanzibar. So like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> obviously that was memorable, <laughs> but just hearing welcome as, you know, like African-American in the United mm -hmm. States, like we struggled to find our culture and our, and our foundation and our roots. So just hearing that welcome home my sister was like it just was heartwarming so was that your first time to the continent that was and have you been since has been back since so i've been twice once i went to um egypt so and i did the pyramids and all of that i mm -hmm. did cairo and luxor and then i recently went to morocco ah so speak, <laughs> speaking of morocco right voyage 22 yeah so there's two groups of people hearing about this trip right I'm assuming you're part of this first group. Mm -hmm. And what was the message that was sent to you for you to be like, all right, I'm on it? So Jackie gave me a phone call, followed up by a text message. And she was just like, we're going to, you know, I know you, you're traveling. Keep this, keep this date clear. It's in April. We're going to Morocco. We're going to do this big friend family trip. And I was like. <laughs> I was like, when? She's like, April. I'm like, all right, let me look at my calendar. It's in there. But wait, wait, are you getting married? And she's like, no, it's just a trip. It's just a trip. I'm like, all right. Then she texts me, follow up with a text message. And I'm like, I think you're getting married. And I'm going to be really mad if you're getting married and you don't say something. <laughs> and then we got the email. Oddly enough, <laughs> there's, there's a reason why I'm our better half. Right? Okay. So part of that story was... You know, I, I tried to send that same message to people. And that message went, res the responses were, oh, bro, I got a big trip going on that week. That that next year, I'm not sure if I can make it. And then I had to follow up like, bro, quite honestly, it's my wedding. He was like, all right, by all means, I'm going to make it. So from that point forward, I was like, look, my people may not make it if we're making it this <laughs> just surprise, we're married type of scenario. So... For those of you that got the, um, hey, we're getting married in Marrakesh, here's the information, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you got this notice, right? And now it's time for you to start getting ready to book flights, book hotels. I know the hotel bill was pretty hefty up front. Were you one of those people who was like, 
bump it, I'm gonna put it on my card and just pay it over time. Or you're like, let's make this work out for me. So fun fact about me, I can commit to a trip, but I'm non-committal in life. <laughs> so I won't make any movement toward that trip before six weeks in advance. Oh. <laughs> so I knew about this, yes, for a whole year. I booked my flight in December. Okay. Got it canceled because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Had to rebook. I booked a hotel in January. And then one of our friends had some alternate plans. So I was able to stay at the host hotel with them. So that was last minute. So I was able to cancel my hotel that I booked and right. then just jump on that, which was probably the best the best decision that I made. Right. But, you know, I'm like a, I'm definitely a last minute planner. Like, I just, I don't know. It's just hard to commit to a thing so, so you, far in advance. You must travel alone a lot, huh? No, but the, so the thing is I do what y'all do, what y'all did. I'd be mm. like, hey, we're going to go to Egypt in October. These is the dates. This is what we should do when we're there. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not, if we're not going to stay together, then people will start booking our stuff oh. before me. Okay. And then you end up pulling up. Yeah, I'm always going to pull up. If I say I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull up. Okay. But the details are sketchy until about three days before. Okay. So, <laughs> so you mentioned your flights got canceled and then you ended up having to rebook. Mm -hmm. Like, what was that flight like? Going from here to Marrakesh. So originally I was flying, I think, through Zurich. And that one got canceled. And so I took it as an opportunity to just... I had already requested the time off. So I just took it as an opportunity to like make the journey a little bit more adventurous on the way. Mm -hmm. So I flew through Madrid. And then I spent a couple hours in Madrid. And then from Madrid, I went to Casablanca. And I had an eight-hour layover in Casablanca, so I booked a layover tour with this lay with this company on this on Viator app. I don't know if anybody uses that, but it saved my life in millions of countries. So, download it if you haven't used it before. Okay. I booked the layover tour through them. Do pick me up from the airport. He was amazing. Um, he took me to. The mosque in uh, Casablanca to some of the city, cafe. Yeah. yeah, cafe to some of the city center, um, the French, like one of the French quarters right. in the city, um, got went by the water, by the Atlantic Ocean, and I didn't even know that Morocco was on the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, learned that when I pulled up to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, yeah. Um, and then from Casablanca, then I flew to Marrakesh, which was only like 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we were at this picture perfect hotel, right? So tell us about like, what was your impressions of the hotel getting in there, getting there? So, um, I'm not, even though I like adventure, I'm not a woodsy kind of girl. So, I was a little scared when we first when I first pulled up because I got there like 11 p.m. Mm. It's dark. There's a lot of rocks and some gravel. But then I heard black people <laughs> in the background, so I was like, "My people here, so I won't get killed in the woods." Mm. I have a very irrational fear of getting murdered in the woods. <laughs> um, so I'm going through the woods with my bags, and then I pull up, and the room is huge. It's it's dope. There's got outdoor patio seating. And it, you know, it feels like a place where you can really experience community, but you know, the woods come with bugs and mosquitoes. And so I'm not a fan of that, but I was a fan of how pretty the accommodations were. It was a perfect venue for a wedding. Um, it, I don't know, it, it exceeded my expectations visually mm -hmm. and really just like gave me what I needed in terms of Instagram photos. Oh, <laughs> it, was, it was content. It was content it was, ready. It was, it was content ready. So, um, the first official day there, uh, when it comes to family vacations, there are a million different trips you can take. You can get your own trip to Texas. Or if you prefer a vacation from your family, you can always get your own Leave the kids with grandma. Yay! Trip to Texas. So go to traveltexas.com slash get your own for the only trip to Texas that matters. Yours. 
What do eight bags of concrete mix, a cooler full of 30 pound sea bass, and a 10 inch compound miter saw have in common? They're all things that are easier to load in and out of the bed of the new F-150. Thanks to its new available pro-access tailgate, that's also a swing gate. The new 2024 Ford F-150, tough this smart, can only be called F-150. Available starting early 2024, pro-access tailgate available starting spring 2024, cargo and load capacity limited by weight and weight distribution. Um, was that, I believe, Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you said you've been to Cairo and Lexor. So I believe the market is in Cairo. You've been to the market in Cairo. So when you guys went to the Medina for the first time, did it remind you of going to the market in Cairo or was it just its own experience? It was a different experience. It was also like Cairo on steroids. Like mm. the market in Medina is aggressive. Like they know that you're there to buy and they want to sell you mm. everything. And, you know, some of them are really good salespeople and you just buy stuff that you don't need just because <laughs> you want to stimulate the economy. And also, they're just really good salespeople. I got to give you some money for that effort. But it's it's a it's a different experience. I have. I don't know. I, I, I felt like it was better than the marketing. Did right. you stay in a square or did you venture off into like the the maze of that city? We did um, the the next like the last day, I think that was the last day before mm -hmm. we left. When we went to the Medina, I was with uh, mostly with Candy, and we definitely did venture off. Yeah, we got a little lost in the maze, and then we were dropping pins. We met up with our friend Yomi one time, and you know, just, it was it was quite an experience, but it was it was fun. Okay, was fun. so later that evening, I'm not sure if you saw the setup for it, but later that evening we had um, rooftop open open bar and then we had a dinner like tell me which what what were you thinking about once you got there and the experience you had with the dinner and the rooftop oh the dinner was that the it was that same night damn it's all a the haze. long table oh the long arabian night that yeah. oh my god that was amazing that was i mean that was probably the best welcome dinner i've ever been to and i'm not like bsing can't curse right I'm not BSing. I'm not bullshitting for the cameras. <laughs> it was dope. Like, the ambiance, the vibes, like, everything was perfect. The the welcome, is it, a, what I would call it, a band? I don't yeah. know. The, I'm the not troop? sure what it was. I don't good. know what I would it was, call uh, it. Was like a I would call troop. it a band, yeah. <laughs> they was, like, dancing. They was jump. They was moving. It was, it was straight vibes. Yeah. I, I then, really enjoyed and it. And then Pops dropped a couple <laughs> two no, steps for y'all. dropped a... Uh, <laughs> Born in the two steps. <laughs> he busts the move. So, and then after dinner, we went to the owner's house. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you thought. And about we that. had the party, and we had fun. I mean, like I was dancing, and then I was drunk. I don't, you know. I mean, that <laughs> it just it happens. Sometimes. Yeah, it happens so fast. But it's it's all about your company too that right. enhances the experience. And our community was strong. Everybody came out to celebrate the Benjamins, and that's what the main focus and priority was, and that's what it felt like. So it was just vibes, and the DJ actually, it was like a good vibe, had a good set. Mm, that's good. So at breakfast, I saw a lot of sunglasses and Advils. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, you guys were able to recoup, right? Yeah, I had it was it was it was a mix of the alcohol and the bougie milk don't come drop. I that, tell you that bougie girl. Yeah, that's man. what it was. It was a mix. Mm. So you gotta put the sunglasses on till you like fully revive yourself. Okay. And so we gave y'all a couple of CP times. We gave y'all CP times. I'm glad that you did. And um, you know, that was that was an interesting experience, but like what were your thoughts of the ceremony itself? Because it wasn't traditional. It right? wasn't traditional, but it was perfect. And it was perfect for Morocco, mm -hmm. it was perfect for the Benjamins, and it was perfect for our community. Um, I mean, the no phones, I mean, that should happen at every yeah. ceremony because you're not looking through your camera lens. You're actually enjoying and paying attention and, and watching and immersing yourself in the love. Mm -hmm. Did you drop a 
drop a thought I tear. know I didn't, not at the ceremony. No, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it that. You were sobbing out I loud. I would call it, you know, like something, something in, in my eye, gotcha, you know, gotcha. and I had to put my sunglasses on. There was a lot I of, you know, looking it. back at the pictures, everybody had glasses on. So yeah, because it was understand. sunny too. So, you know, there okay. was allergies happening. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Later that day, late right after that, we had a nice little sit down ceremony, like mm-hmm. reception. Um, you know, what can you say that you took from that experience, right? Like, because there was, you know, a, a nice conglomerate of women together, like long term relationships, and then you know the breast came out and stepped out and did our thing, you know what I mean? But um, what 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 did you get from that? Because it was. Once again, this is not everybody knows Jackie, everybody knows Paige, everybody knows both of us, but we got people coming in from different aspects of our lives and coming together. Like, what was that feeling like for you? I mean, I felt like everybody came for a good vibe. Everyone came to celebrate. Um, it was just, I felt like a good time was the main priority for everybody. Also, it's a long journey, so you... Man, you yeah you gotta come to enjoy yourself i mean there was belly dancing and shisha and i missed out on the drinks. shisha so they was they was hiding the shisha but it's cool yeah it was it was i mean good but i mean the belly dancer was i mean she was she was doing a watch thing. she was doing a thing she was in attendance <laughs> all right so were you part of the group that had an extended trip no, I didn't because I had to get back to mm. work. So were you one of those people that like went back to work the following day? I or? did actually. I flew through Portugal going home and I actually had to be in the office for three meetings the next day. So wow. it was really a struggle. But, you know, you get some coffee in you. I even got a Manny Petty that night oh, afterwards. Sweet, you know? sweet. Yeah, you just got to get right back into it because... If you, you can't stay on the time zone that you're in. You just got to immerse yourself back in your current time zone and just push through. You just got to be a soldier. Soldier. You're yeah, a soldier. You're All right. Soldier. So you mentioned that when you came to the continent the first time, you was welcomed home, right? Um, as a woman of color, um, as a black woman, um, what has your travels while black been like for you? So they've ranged from, I mean... I want to say, like, I've, I've, I can honestly say I've never had a horrible experience somewhere. Um, I, of course, I've been, I've experienced microaggressions, like, oh my god, can I touch your hair? Like, oh, your skin. Like, do you tan? And I'm like, nope, just came out the womb like this. But, <laughs> um, but I've never experienced like overt discrimination or prejudice in any of my travels. So I, I do want to say that I think that I'm lucky in that respect. But, um, you know, you get anything from people not understanding that there are successful Black people in America. So they think you like there to shoot a reality show or you like a rapper's girlfriend or something. Or we've gotten, we were in Paris, a bunch of us were in Paris and they thought we were like the Real Housewives. Like... Oh, wow. Yeah, it ranges from that to like, just like you don't even get a second look some places. Mm. And then like, there's some time, you know, some places like I was in Sevilla, Spain, and like, they just don't get groups of black people. Oh, so, okay. you know, we we're dancing with the flamenco dancers and people like thought we were related to them. Oh, like, wow. it's kind of strange. I mean, they were a little bit darker skin than everybody else, but they weren't black. So it's kind of strange. But, you know, like, I I, I, I want to say that in every country there's indigenous population, right. so we could just be a part of that. We could fit right in with that indigenous population, too. So it's actually kind of cool in that respect, too. Okay. Because they never know. They can't see you coming. You could be, you know, you could open your mouth and just hit them with the Portuguese. Bang, bang. Yeah. I mean, I can't, but <laughs> some people can. <laughs> so, so you mentioned early on that you are a last-minute traveler, like... How is how is that even possible? Like, cause cause I usually at this portion ask provide a tip, but you would probably give people set up some failures unless <laughs> unless um, you know you actually have ways to do it last minute that allows I, it to be still financially sound 
and you can still make your destination. So what are yeah. some what are your 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 go tos when you want to wait till the last minute? So I think first, if you are going to start a year and thinking you're going to travel a lot that year, stick with one airline or airline partners, um, and even one hotel brand because building loyalty with the brand really does you know you get what you you get back what you paid into it um i get free upgrade i i exclusively fly with united or united partners star alliance partner so booking last minute flights i still get i still get better prices better price matches gotcha. than other consumers when they like look on expedia to book a united flight um i get like best offers i get free upgrades i get to book flights with miles that I've accumulated or earned. I get, you know, priority seating, priority mm -hmm. boarding. And even if you, the same thing with hotels, you can get, if you stick with one hotel brand, you could get early check-in and late check-out. So right. you could actually book a flight, book a trip for two days. So you're only staying one night, but it feels like two full days gotcha. because you get the early check-in and the extended late check-out. So that would be my tip. Even if it's a little bit more than, even if you see an airline is a little bit more than another airline, just still stick with that one airline and build some loyalty and and build a relationship with them. I say relationship, air uh -huh. quotes. Um, so in, in yeah. those cases, are you going direct to the, the partner sites or you're doing like a like Expedia, Priceline, Google? I price? usually go directly to the to the to the site to okay. the airline site but i have booked through like expedias and stuff okay. as well but i usually do go through direct the airline the air the airlines have the best offers they're the actual airline will give you the best price okay okay so where can people find you um you can find me on the streets of soha <laughs> Other, also known as South Harlem, <laughs> but you can also find me on. <laughs> Everybody laughs because it's really the Upper West Side, but I refuse to say that. Um, but I'm also at Instagram at Fab Life of Z. I'm on LinkedIn. I do not do Twitter, but I could be persuaded to. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, thank mm -hmm. you very much for doing the show. Thank you for having um, me. Appreciate you. So if you haven't already, please remember subscribe, like, comment, and hit that notification bell so you guys can get the latest episodes, especially when this beautiful young lady pops up again in the next yes. season, right? Yes. So with that said, I hope you guys stay safe, travel more, peace. When you visit a state as big and diverse as Texas, there are a million different trips you can take. Let's say you've got an appetite for whitewater kayaking. You can get your own. So this is why they call it Devil's River. Trip to Texas. Or maybe you have an actual appetite. I'll take a pound of brisket, six ribs, uh, three links of sausage, and a, a piece of pecan pie. Trip to Texas. Go to TravelTexas.com slash get your own for the only trip to Texas that matters. Yours. If you travel for work, you know to pack two suits, business and swim. You know with your Delta SkyMiles Business Amex card, buying that plane ticket for a business trip can get you closer to medallion status. You know that a meeting in Montana means visiting almost every national park. Yellowstone? Check. Because you're the chief excursion officer. It's why you're a Delta SkyMiles Platinum Business American Express card member. If you travel, you know. Terms apply. Visit go.amex slash you know business. Whatever job you need to do out there, grab the right tool to get it done. The new F-150 with an available hybrid engine and up to 7.2 kilowatts of pro power on board to power things on the go. It's not a tool you'll hang in a tool shed, but you can certainly use it to build one. The new 2024 Ford F-150. Tough this smart can only be called F-150. Available starting early 2024. Optional features the owner's manual for important operating instructions.